It is a look at the Horsham and District Football, and it's a little bit of netball too tonight. And we've got Big Peter Weir with us. So how are you, Weary? Yeah, going really well, Wayne. And it was um, great to have the weekend off last weekend. You forget how hard the game is on your body. So I was very thankful that the uh, league decided to have a bye after the first four games. Oh, I tell you, uh, from those rolling hills of rainbow where the uh, rain is expected to come, they've even got their own weather station that projects the Wimmera and the Mallee areas uh, with one of those big um, golf balls on a stick out in the paddocks. And the only other big thing that they can see out in the paddocks is you doing the rounds with your air seater with no footy on. Yeah, the farmers would have been definitely happy as well with the buy and a lot of work would have got done last weekend, I'd say. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, there's been no rain on the horizon, but hopefully once the paddocks are all sown that we'll see a nice forecast um, from the weather station and an inch of rain. It'd be nice, flow, man. I bet it would be. I'll tell you what, the girls on the netball courts wouldn't mind it being a bit dry for their big match. And the girls uh, from uh, the uh, Japan Rainbow Storm have been going along pretty well. And I thought I'd ask you about them, Weary, because uh, their uh, third versus fourth clash this weekend promises to be a beauty. And uh, there's some real stars um, emerging in the green dresses. Yeah, I think so. I think the crowd will be split on the weekend, whether they're watching the senior footy or the senior netball, which is great for the club. And they've got a real challenge against Kwantung. I think they're third on the ladder, but um, Georgia Batson's been a great recruit in the goals. And Penny Fisher, who's been a, a legend of netball in the area for a long time, she's been out um, of the side. So there's only better things to come once she comes back into the defence. And yeah, it's an exciting season ahead for the girls. Certainly is. Of course, Georgia is Dan and Will Batson's sister. And uh, Penny, uh, she's been out of the side. And Weary, I'm a bit concerned really here because uh, we haven't got uh, a list of the girls playing in front of us. So I think that uh, maybe for you and I should be added to the selection committee out there. I'm not sure, but it seems with the netball, there's a bit of secret squirrelling going on. But I think um, everyone will be hoping Penny's out there um, on the court this weekend. <laughs> Come on, Penny. We want to know if you're playing or not. So, so let us know here at the Flow on the Friday Night Sports Show. It's great, though, to get into the season ahead. And uh, we've got some big games. So let's get to them because uh, we're looking at Lahara and taking on the Swifts after the bye. It's a big opportunity for the Swifts to really cement their position and even put some pressure on for top two. Yeah, I think the Swifts will win this. I think the weekend's forecast is going to be cold and windy, so at the foot of the mountains they're down there at Lahara will be no doubt cold, which might keep the local boys in the game for a little while, and I expect Shannon Argyle to kick a few goals, but overall Swifties will be too strong for them. I'll tell you, Cal Key at home, there will be one thing that I can say, and that is Taylor Slate won't be in this game for very long. It doesn't matter what the temperature is out on the Cal Key Recreation Reserve. Yeah, Stewie Farr won't let his team become complacent. And although the Taylor's Lake boys have improved, I'd say Cal Key will be too good. And look, look out for a big first quarter if they're kicking with the breeze. Oh, a couple of rivals at the Sheep Paddocks at the showgrounds at Natty Mark. They take on Harrow Balmoral. They will need to have an absolute ripping of a game at Natty Mark to even pressure Harrow Balmoral on the scoreboard. I just think that the Kangaroos will warm to the occasion and put themselves back in top six contention. Oh, I think they will. There's a little bit of blood in the water now and obviously teams will be taking note that Harrow have dropped a couple of games this year. So Natty Mark will be keen to see how they shape up against them but I'd imagine the Harrow boys will be too good. And the Rupp boys will head across the wheat paddocks um, of the Wimmera and they will find their way to the Western Highway at Pimpinayo. When they get there, I reckon they'll be kicking the ball to the southern end goal over the goal umpire's head and landing it out on the highway for a 30-goal win. Yeah, they'll definitely be favourites in this game. I'm not sure if all their recruits are playing every weekend, Flo Man, so that'll bring them back to the pack a little bit if that's the case. And I hope for the Pimp and I O boys they can get a fast start because if they don't, it could be all one-way traffic, as you said. All right. Now, Big Peter Weir, we head into our Eden Absley and Caniva Leor report and these two clubs play each other in round five action at Eden Hope. After the last time that Eden Hope played, you just have to say Caniva Leor may be primed for their first win of the season. Can the boys in that Cougar outfit do the job against the Saints? Oh, I think they can. It's hard to pick a game that didn't kick, uh, a team that didn't kick a goal last game, but I think both teams, this will be a start of a new rivalry in the new league, and both of them have a lot to prove, even though it's at the bottom end of the ladder, because the Caniva boys will want to prove they're a better club than 0-4, and, and I'm sure the Edenhope boys will want to get out there and rectify their last effort and show that they're a better club than 
um, not kicking a goal in their last senior match. I tell you too, these two sides both come out of KNT, so there is that kind of context of the two South Australian orientated sides, the ones that are the furthest to the border in Victoria, and that for mine is going to bring a really, really big heat for the game. And I think it's going to go right across the grades because uh, as you take a look at the reserves and um, you see that uh, the boys in the Caniva Lior Cougars trip had a bit more success in their reserve side and uh, they're going to come out um, really hard and I reckon they could even beat Eden Apsley who at the moment are sitting in second to bottom only above your Parrot Rainbow boys. Yeah, I think same as in the senior grades. Probably both clubs are lacking a bit of confidence throughout so it's probably key for the twos and the senior boys just to get their hands on the footy and just try and be clean because I'd imagine both contests will be pretty hot as you said with the new rivalry so I think whoever settles into the game gets some clean possession, gets the ball in their team's hands and just builds some confidence. I think it's not going to be about someone kicking five or six goals to win the game. I think they're just going to have to get strip it right back to basics and, and play good team footy and whoever uh, can gain possession and stay cleanest over the day I reckon will win both grades. I tell you what, um, when it comes to their um, under-17 side, both of them have been absolutely poleaxed every week they've played. Yet this time, 11 plays 12, the bottom two sides. Who gets their first win of the season? Oh, I think I'll back the Caniva boys, but yeah, both teams are struggling on numbers there. They certainly are in the really short numbers. And in the 14-year-old grade, it uh, gets a bit better here for the Eden Absley side. But uh, in the, the context of this, it's fifth playing uh, second and Caniva Lior in fifth place. They might fancy themselves this, I reckon, at the games that are being played. This is probably going to be one of the best to watch early in the morning. Yeah, it definitely is. It's amazing because it's similar to the Chapart Rainbow Footy Club that we have quite poor numbers in the under-17s, but both under-14s teams are quite strong here and it should be a ripping game of footy and I'll be interested in the result. I certainly will be too. So, OK, Peter, we move now to the last clash and this is in the senior game and it's the Naradua Kwantong boys. They come up against the boys from Japarat Rainbow and it's going to be an absolute beauty down at Kwantong. It'll be cold down there. We hope it's wet. And Big Peter Weir, we hope that the soreness of your body has been overcome by a week off and that you're ready to go and you're ready to take on those red and black boys. Yeah, well, we'll have to be there on top of the ladder and they're rightfully there and... I think we take confidence out of beating the uh, grand finalists of 2019 in Harrow last time out. And now we've got the other team that was in that grand final, Naradua Kwantong. So it'll be a big box to tick for our boys. And we know that they're such a momentum team and a momentum club, Naradua Kwantong. So it's going to be very important for us to start early. And I think the game could be won and lost in the centre bounces this week. Because if they get on top in there and give their forwards a look... I think they'll be hard to stop. But if we can do the same, I think um, likewise we can kick a score up the other end of the ground. So watch for the midfield battle to decide the game this week. I reckon I'm going to ask you about one name, number 28, um, Ash Clugston. Back into your side after uh, that injury and the break. Are we going to see you the best of Ash? Oh, we will. He's playing on a half-back flank flow, man. But no matter where you put him on the ground, he's a star and he's been like that for 20 years. So... I'll expect his name to be in the best players, as always, this weekend. No, I tell you what, supported by Simon in that back line, the Eldleston boys will play well. We've got the two Batson boys, and they've got Coxie running around and Inks to two, and the big Peter Weir putting up the Dukes up forward. I noticed that you haven't got your big recruit from out of um, Nord in South Australia playing. Looks like uh, you haven't got Warren selected in this game. No, I think he looks at the weather forecast and cold and windy didn't suit him this week, Flo Man, so he's staying in Adelaide. <laughs> oh, he said something about not being able to get over the border, but we don't believe him. And we're looking at uh, this is going to be a big match of football, and I'm going to tip uh, a bit of an upset here. I reckon the Storm might just um, be able to clip the wings of those big bomber outfits uh, out at Kwantong on this weekend's game. The reserve grade, this is going to be an important one because both sides come into this game. They are really pl- primed for another really good battle, and your, your Storm boys, so your boys have been actually really trying to push to get that win on the board and that this weekend, can they do so against the highly fancy top of the table? I'll build it up, Weary. I'm not sure that I should have, but it's going to be a tough outing. Yeah, it will be a tough outing for the um, twos boys, but as you said, we've got a much more depth in the team this weekend and Luke Werner returns after a really uh, nasty hamstring injury and he's an ex-coach and captain and a, a really good senior player. So just having one bloke like that back just changes the... Um, structure of a twos team so much so I expect um, him to have a big impact but I still think they just might struggle against the top of the table Bombers. I was just looking on the list of uh, names, name for the Storm and I was hoping to see the Butcher who's expanded. Uh, I thought he might expand back into a reserves game of footy, the old Heath Cluggy. 
No, I think it's expanded into a new set of golf clubs, unfortunately, Flo, man. <laughs> we might not see Plugger out on the footy oval this year, which would be disappointing. <laughs> uh, well, Arts, at uh, the under-17s, uh, it is a chance for your boys. Uh, been showing a bit, uh, and Rachel Kwantong in seventh place, you're in sixth. And your boys, a real chance here, even with the numbers, you've been bringing up some of the better under-14 lads, and, and you're going well. Yeah, I think the coach, Steve Leach, would have circled this game as a real chance to get another win, and I can't see why they won't go very close. Obviously, a lack of numbers is going to hurt them, but Murphy Leach and uh, Louis Cox will have a big game, and hopefully the boys can sneak over the line. All right, Dad. What about this? The young lads running around the morning should be cold enough down there, that's for sure, and I reckon that this moisture hopefully does get through, and uh, it could uh, present um, well, what will be a lot of ball on the ground, and I'd suspect that of that, with Naradjil Kwantong in 11th place and you in 10th, another really close contest, and a chance for your boys to get their first win. Yeah, I reckon so as well. And it's great to see there's 24 young fellas selected in this game. So it's great to see the numbers in the under-14. So the coaches, Blue Fisher and um, Adam Gould, have a bit to work with there. And they'll make sure all the boys get a good run but still have um, a win in mind for the team. So it should be an exciting game under-14s to kick off the day. Certainly was exciting uh, when we uh, saw that photograph from the last game of the only goal kicked. And uh, there was the boys gathering around and high-fiving and all sorts. So we're hoping for that for the Storm boys in the green outfit. And we're looking forward to the results coming through. You have a terrific weekend, Peter. No worries. Thanks, Lyon.